What's up guys, welcome to Bill, and today you're gonna get to see the fenders in red paint. They look awesome, check it out. All right, so it took me a while to paint the fenders. It actually took me way longer than I thought it was going to. I think the week before Christmas, I said I was gonna have them painted the next week. It turns out cold weather was coming. Who knew in the winter it got cold. Anyway, it got super cold here, like 15, nine to 15 degrees and it wasn't good for painting. I have no way to heat a paint booth or heat my garage for that matter. And so I just couldn't paint, so I just had to wait. So while I waited, I did some renovations on our house, trying to get ready for a new baby, which is super exciting. Um, and I waited for the warm weather to come, and it came, and so I got to paint. So it's awesome, I'm, I'm super stoked. Uh, this, you see behind me is my paint booth, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but I got the fenders off the car, and, and I was able to kind of compare the two and make sure they all matched up. When I built these fenders, I built them off of measurements, guessing, and eyeballing. But mostly, it was just me guessing and, and doing what I thought looked right. So, I wasn't really sure if they were gonna match up. That was really the biggest, uh, I guess the most nerve-wracking thing about even starting this project was how do you make two fenders look the same? And uh, I did it by accident, so <laughs> it worked out. Uh, but what I did find is when I pulled them off and I sat them next to each other, that bottom run that goes underneath the second scoop, was way short on the passenger side and it was longer on the driver's side. It was actually thicker on the driver's side too and I thought it looked a lot better that way. So I took uh, a little bit of extra time on these fenders and I made the passenger side match the driver's side. Now how I did that is I bolted the passenger side up, I took some measurements of the driver's side to see how, how wide it needed to be and how long it needed to be and then I kind of built a small frame thing underneath the car to hold the fiberglass where I wanted it to go. I decided to use fiberglass filler for a few reasons. One, I thought it would make the shape pretty easy, and two, I wanted to have plenty to drill into and plenty to, uh, to shape into so I could get the exact shape that I was looking for. And if you use fiberglass cloth, you don't really get the thickness. It's a lot lighter, but you don't get the thickness that you get with the fiberglass uh, Bondo or the, the fiber reinforced filler. So I used the fiber reinforced filler. So I pulled that off. Obviously it was super, super rough, but it was the right measurements. And so I just took sandpaper to it and I sanded and sanded and sanded and sanded and then I sanded again and eventually I got the shape that I wanted. I had to use a bunch of Bondo and stuff and, and just get all the low spots out and, and knock down the high spots. But I got the shape that I wanted and they really matched up incredibly well. I'm super, super happy with how it worked. And it proved something to me and that was that this process works as long as you kind of have an eye for it and as long as you're careful with your, your measurements and how you're making the part, you can get two really similar uh, parts. Obviously, it's not as accurate as a computer, but it's not as expensive either, so it works out. Um, anyway, so I got them both to match, and then I got them sanded down and got them all primed up, and then I decided I was going to make a paint booth. Now, the reason I did this instead of painting outside was, one, because of heat. I wanted to hold in as much heat as possible, and even though my shop's not heated, um, it's still warmer in here than it is outside. And then, two, dust. Dust is everywhere. You cannot get rid of dust ever. And so I've, I've been trying a bunch of different ways to paint at home without building like a full-fledged paint booth that will minimize dust. And so I wanted to try something new. So all I did was buy three drop cloths and I unrolled them all the way and, and unfolded them and draped them over my rafters and I draped them down the side. And then I even draped them over the surface that I was painting on, these two saw horses that I was painting on. And, and my whole goal was to eliminate as much dust as possible. My shop is pretty dusty. Um, I did vacuum and clean it before I started this whole process, but it's still just a dusty place. It was just a mess when I bought the house and I've been cleaning it ever since. And so when I sealed this all off, I just sealed it up with tape uh, and overlapped all the edges. My hope was that I wouldn't get dust in the paint. Okay, so I tacked off the parts right before getting ready for paint, got my gun set up. I like to set up a table with my gun, my gun stand that I made. I've got a video about that actually, I'll post it soon. Um, how to make the gun stand. It's really simple, uh, but it, it saves you a lot of headache. And you don't have to worry about your gun falling over. Um, my mixing cups, my uh, strainers, my paints, my paint thinners, uh, my clear coat, everything. I want it all in one place because paint is a little bit time sensitive. And so you got to be got to be ready for the process that you're about to embark on for the next hour. So this helps me using this table. And I also got a, a, a fender out um, just to spray some test shots, make sure the paint gun was working like I want it to. I don't know much about painting, but I know if the gun's spraying okay or if it's not spraying. So, so I use that to kind of check my spray pattern and make sure that it's okay. Um, 
And then it was time to mix paint. Now I use these same PPG cups. The people that I buy paint from give them to me. So I use them to mix the paint. They're graduated, which means if you've got a four to one ratio, it shows you where to pour for each one. And it just makes, it makes it brainless. I mean, it's super, super easy. So I mixed up some paint. I'll actually show you the paint that I use. Let's see, here it is. I use this, it's PPG Shop Line. It's a pretty, it's, it's like a low grade paint for PPG, but it's still a pretty high grade paint because PPG just makes great products. And that's what I get locally. So I like to support my local shop because those guys are awesome. Um, so I use that. And then the clear that I use is uh, just this universal clear coat, also Shop Line. Uh, clear and it's it's great. It's it's really easy to work with. It's not super picky And so when you're painting a shop it it makes life really easy. Um, so anyway, I Got them ready. I wiped them down made sure they were super clean I wasn't getting any dust off of the part Poured it into my gun made sure I use a strainer and I actually sometimes I'll double strain I normally do this with clear coat not so much with color and what I mean by that is I'll pour the paint into the cup uh, of the gun through the strainer and then I'll pour it back into the measuring cup through the strainer and then I'll pour it back into the gun through the strainer which I guess is triple um, but just to make sure I get all pieces and parts and particles out of the paint and especially out of the clear coat. I've had paint flakes shoot through my clear coat and uh, it's really frustrating when you get to that point. So got my gun filled up, got ready to go. The data sheet calls for three coats of color, three coats of clear. Um, so I basically just followed that. You can find any data sheets online. So I just Googled PPG data sheets, found my, my paint number and code and everything like that. And it told me exactly what to do. And so I walked into my booth and I painted the first coat and I really wanted to see how this booth was going to work. After I got done with the first coat, I was really happy. I mean, there wasn't a lot of dust at all. I've painted in garages before, just with the open garage. And there is, I mean, the paint looks awful, honestly, it's just dusty. And there really wasn't that much dust. I found a few places in the body working that I could have done a better job, but overall I was really happy with it. So I went on and I added my second coat, and then I added my third coat, and I thought I was going to have to add a fourth coat. I didn't know how well red would cover, but it actually covered really, really well. And so I was able to go straight on to my clear. Now I don't have two guns. Somebody in one of my comments um, in the last painting video I did said I should have a gun for color and I should have a gun for clear, and you're probably right, but I don't, so I use the same one. So what I did while I was waiting on my base coat to set up is I just took my gun apart and cleaned it thoroughly, as much as I could. Um, took, all, took the tip off, took everything out of, of the tip of the gun, took the cup off, got uh, some, some cleaner and just wiped everything down and cleaned it as much as possible, because I didn't want paint flakes going into my clear coat. So when I got ready for clear coat, I did the same thing with my strainer. I, I triple strained it to make sure I got all the particles out. It got it clean, it got, it got all the particles out. And then I went and started spraying. First coat went on pretty easy. Now when you do your first coat of clear, um, the way it was described to me, now I wouldn't say I'm a professional, but I was told this by a professional, is the first coat you should kind of um, mist on. You don't want to lay it super heavy. And that gives the second two coats something to stick to. Now I don't know if that's right, but that's what I did and it worked. So, so I sprayed the first coat on kind of light and it came out pretty good, pretty clear, not a lot of dirt or anything, or especially not bugs, which is a big issue in a garage. And, and it looked good. And so I went on to my second and my third coats. And by the third coat, I was laying it on really wet, didn't really have to worry about um, runs. Now, what I did find in my second coat of clear coat, I started getting water coming out of my gun. And so I replaced the air filter. I use these Devil Bliss air filters uh, that go onto the end of the gun. I think they're really supposed to just be like a secondary filter to your main air filter or your main water filter, but I don't have a water filter, so I use them all the time, and, and they really work, but you only get about, I don't know, one pass out of them. I mean, for the fenders, I got three coats of color and one coat of clear before water started coming through, and I had to change it. So I do go through these pretty, pretty regularly. I go through a lot of them when I'm doing paint jobs, but it saves me water, it saves me a lot of money on a filtration system, and, and it works for me. So once the clear coat was done, I looked to see if I could find anything in it. And I actually did find some dirt. I found a pretty large piece of dirt in the clear coat. And I wish I would have filmed this, but it was kind of late and I didn't really think about it. Uh, but what I did is I took some tape. I'll show you. So if you take tape, um, I actually learned this from a body guy as well. That tape's gone. Let's do this one. I've got tape everywhere. But if you take tape um, and you do this, and then say this is a piece of dirt, I don't know if you can see it. So let's say that's a piece of dirt. You can touch it with the tape and you can lift it out of the clear coat. If you do it really early, um, the spot that it leaves, the clear coat will self-level into that spot. 
it's awesome. It's a really good trick. You can use tweezers too, but tweezers make me nervous because they're sharp and, you know, sharp. So, I let them dry. Uh, it's, it wasn't exactly 70 degrees, which is what the data sheet calls for, for the paint to cure and for the paint to dry. And so I let them dry for like 36 hours, I think, instead of the 24 that it says. It might have been 48. I don't know. I let them dry until today. <laughs> and uh, and it's, been, it's been about two days. So, uh, I've made sure they were really, really good and cured, and then I went in and got them. And they look awesome. I mean, they really look good. There's some orange peel in the paint. I'm pretty sure it's because I use a crappy gun. Um, but the dust is very, is like minimal. It's already really smooth, a lot smoother than any paint job I've done in a garage before. And I think some met, some wet sanding and polishing will, will take the orange peel out completely. And so I got to put them on the car for the first time as a painted part. And I kind of, I had this like realization of this part that I created, right? Like I thought about this part in my head and then I made it. And, and it was something really cool about that, really special about it. And they fit, they fit really well. And so I bolted everything down, everything still works, everything still fits. And uh, the, the bottom's kind of hung off because I haven't made any mounting holes for them. So I took some screws and ran them into the bottom of the fender so, the hold, so it would hold the fender on the car. And that was the most nerve wracking part of this entire in this entire experience and, and it worked it worked fine so I'm gonna use those holes to uh, to do my my rib nuts and all that that I showed you in the very first video uh, of this series all right so that's it the fenders are on and I, and I think they look pretty good I mean in my opinion they look great um, but I don't know let me know what you think do you like them do you hate them I, it doesn't matter to me either way I love them um, it's something that I created you know and that's that's what this is about for me is making the car uh, like I have this dream I have this idea of what my perfect MR2 would look like and I'm building it, right? And, and, and it's so cool to see that come together and see it actually come together well and not me not have to like trash this now that I put all this work into it is awesome. So I can't wait to get started on the front fenders. The next video, uh, you might've noticed I, I don't have wheels and uh, that's because I sold them. I also sold my exhaust. It's really loud. I'll tell you why I did that in a couple videos from now, but I love the wheels and I love the exhaust, but for what I'm trying to build, they weren't really working. And so I got some new wheels that are bigger and way wider and I'm stoked on them and I can't wait to show them to you. I'll show them to you in the next video. And then the exhaust, I can't tell you what I'm doing with that yet, but it's going to be awesome. I've actually had it planned for like four months and I'm getting close to that day where I can tell you what we're going to do with that. And so I'm really stoked. Um, but yeah, so the next video, I'm going to put the wheels on so you can see those. Hopefully the tires will be in. Uh, by then as well. If not, we'll just stage the wheels up and show you what it's going to look like. I think I can get the tires in by then. Um, and then I'm also going to finish up the fenders. So I did screw the fenders on, but I've got a bunch of like hardware and, and gaskets and stuff to make them look really clean. And so I'm going to do that in the next video and I'm going to finish mounting them. So I've got three holes on each fender that have to be drilled and mounted. And so I'm going to finish doing that in the next video as well. So hopefully we'll get a good idea of what the back's going to look like um, when it's finished. And then I've also got the front fenders. I've been working on those um, and getting those ready. That's going to be one video, so you'll be able to watch a video from when I start the front fenders until they're painted. Um, and it's going to go just, just one shot, and we'll see how it goes. Um, and then you guys let me know if you, if you like a bunch of videos like I did with the back fenders. We'll keep doing that. If you like just one video that takes a little bit longer to make, um, I'll do that. Uh, it, it really doesn't matter to me either way. Um, but... I'm super excited. I think the car looks great. I think it's going to look super mean. And, uh, and it's different, you know. I, there's not another car with these fenders on them anywhere, ever, which is awesome to me. That's cool. Anyway, so if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe to see more on this build. I also started an Instagram page, and I'm using it to post kind of updates and stuff. So, for example, this past, like, four weeks where I've been working on my house, I've been doing some work on the cars. Um, but nothing I've made videos out of yet. I've been filming, but it's not ready for video. And so I've been taking pictures and stuff of that, and I'm posting it on Instagram. So that Instagram is built on YouTube. So make sure you go check that out, built on YouTube. And you'll be able to keep up with me. You'll be, you'll be able to see what I'm working on each day. I'm going to be posting updates of the front fenders on there. I posted a picture of the new wheels on there, a kind of teaser picture. So you can go check those out. And, uh, and I just want to stay in touch with you guys through Instagram. Uh, so that there's more opportunities for us to interact between each video. So check that out. Go follow on Instagram. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Like if you haven't liked. 
Let me know what you think in the comments below. I try to respond to all the comments. Well, I would say it this way. I try to respond to all the fruitful comments. So I don't care if they're positive or negative. If you're trying to accomplish something like that helps the channel or helps the community, I'll respond to you. But comment below. I'll get in touch with you. You can shoot me ideas. I love getting new ideas from you guys of ways to do things, ways to make my processes better, ways to make these fenders better, ideas for the car, whatever it is. I'd love to see your thoughts. I'd love to see your ideas in the comments. See ya.